Welcome to Thomasville Insights with the City of Thomasville. On the podcast, we'll talk to experts on everything from Thomasville history and events to daily operations and city business, all while having some fun in the process. We're your hosts, Austin Reams and Christy Owens. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Thomasville Insights. We're so glad you could join us for this December show. Uh, December is a lot about uh, get, getting presents, but also giving, and uh, we wanted to talk about giving a lot today. We have uh, one great guest and one average one. I'll let you guess the average one, but his first name is Ricky. Uh, but uh, anyway, we're going to have a lot of fun on this show talking about how Team Thomasville uh, gives, gives back. And I'm just kidding. Everybody loves Ricky. Um, but um, anyway, uh, Christy, uh, your thoughts on December, and we're getting close to Christmas. Getting close to Christmas. I'm almost done with my shopping. I don't know about you, but I'm getting close. So there's a light at the end of the tunnel. So I'm excited to finish all that up. I've been trying to shop with our downtown Thomasville and other Thomasville businesses, so give them a little support this year. Um, so yeah, just trying to get it all taken care of and excited for the holidays to be here. All right. Well, let's let's get to our guest here today. Yeah, we have two wonderful guests with us today. They have both been a part of our podcast before. We have Corporal Crystal Parker from the Thomasville Police Department, and we also have Ricky Zambrano from. He is actually our Community Outreach and Recru- Recruitment Manager for the city of Thomasville. So like Austin said, we're gonna be talking about ways that the city of Thomasville and also our employees give back to our community. And so these are two perfect people that can talk about that with us today. So to start things off, I guess, um, maybe to either one of you, why do you think it's important that the city of Thomasville has these programs in place and um, encourages our employees to, to give back, not just during the holidays, but you know throughout the year? Yeah, I'll, I guess I'll just jump in, Christy. Um, so, you know, community is about everybody working together to um, support each other and, and create a uh, better life and, and work environment. And so with the city being willing to do these programs that gives back to the community, um, that shows the people that we're supporting them. We care about their feelings. We care about their quality of life. Um, and so there's there's... We're really fortunate here. We have so many ways that, that we can um, support people and, and show that we, we care about them. They're not just a number out there. They're, they're, we're all part of the community, so we're all working together on that. Yeah, I think it's good. You know, We wanna, wanna give back not only to our employees, but to our community that we live in and work in and, and love. So it's great that um, the city of Thomasville has these programs in place that mm-hmm. can offer some assistance. So we have a lot to sort of go through today. So Ricky, I'm going to start with you. Um, A lot of these programs, um, you know, we encourage our employees to take part in. And let's start off with our CASA Kids program, because that's something that's going on right now. Um, And so just maybe give us an overview of that and and what that's all about. Yeah, well, first of all, thanks uh, for having me. Uh, Austin, it's always a pleasure to see you as well uh, with a great introduction. Are you sure? Uh, (laughs) But, uh, Christy, it is a true pleasure to be here with you. Uh, but but in all seriousness, you know, before we, we get into that, the, I think the key is not just all the programs, but the willingness of the employees. I think that goes such a long ways. And, and the CASA Kids is a perfect example. The email went out with the listing of, of children available for adoption, for lack of a better term. And all 26 kids were accounted for within three hours of that email going out. So that, that, that speaks volumes to the willingness by employees, departments, organizations, leaders uh, within, the, w- within our uh, organization to, to get out there and give back. And, and these aren't um, one item gifts. These are wish lists from the kids and kids that are in need. And you know, it really, it really fills my heart when, when those lists go out to see the, the items that are on there. And it's items that sometimes you, we take for granted. We may, we may tell our own kids that, no, you don't ask for that from your family. Don't put that on a list, that's a little much. But you know, you, you know what these kids are going through to a certain extent, or I guess we really don't always know what they're going through. Um, but we know that they're living lives uh, not at the same, you know, not equal to what our kids are, and they're in, they're in other situations. So to give those kids and give them a Christmas that hopefully takes away from uh, the distractions of what they have on a daily basis uh, and, and can 
make them feel a lot better is, is a big thing. So, so that program, um, that, that's a great program. Uh, this year we had 26 kids ad adopted, and as I said, they were they were spoken for very very quickly, and and that's not that's not a new thing. Mm -hmm. But I, I do believe, uh, according to Dominic, that uh, three three hours was kind of right on record time uh, as far as being spoken for. Yeah, and Dominic's our HR. Yes, our yes, our Dominic Ford, as everybody knows. I, I just, you know, typically everybody knows Dominic by by, by first name basis instead of Dominic Ford. It's kind of like, who's Dominic Ford? Yeah. You know, <laughs> all you need is one name, Dominic. Yeah, he's our he's our HR director. Most people know him at this point, I think. <laughs> Larger than life. That's right. So how um, how are the children selected that participate in this program? Uh, the list comes over uh, to us from Never Lost and. Um, it's an anonymous, uh, anonymous list, obviously, with, with no names attached to it. We get uh, families. Uh, we, we get them listed as families, and, uh, you know, for lack of a better term, it'll be listed something along, as a, along the lines of family one, family two, family three, and then boy, age, girl, age, and they'll have the wish list. Uh, attached to each of those. And like you said, so this is an opportunity for City of Thomasville employees. Once the email goes out, employees that are interested in adopting um, these children for the holidays and adopting, I mean, purchasing gifts for them, um, they can choose to do so and participate in this program. And then I guess the city takes all of those gifts and then um, is able to distribute them to the children. Uh, yes, we, we will be... Uh Taking our journey over to Never Lost and and having a, again once again a representation of the of the city uh, staff and employees uh, coming over to deliver those gifts and uh, and in addition at the same time uh, handing over a check from the charity fund as well from the employee charity fund as well. Um, but it's always a great day to come over and and and, and meet with the staff and. And deliver those gifts and uh, and see the gratitude from the staff as well. Obviously, we do not interact with the kids, uh, but we know that our our compassion and um, and our you know our, our desire to serve is relayed over to those kids through the staff members. Ricky, let's jump in on that real quick. You, um, we we've got a lot more of them, so we want to get through them. Uh, fairly quickly, but you mentioned the Employee Charity Fund real quick. Give us uh, about that, and then, of course, we have uh, about three more projects that we're heavily involved with, but give me a, let me know about that charity fund. Well, Employee Charity Fund is, uh, it, it's really, it's a great, it's a great um, operation that we have here. It's a donation that's given by employees uh, at, at the amounts that they desire, comes out of their pay, directly out of their paycheck and it services different different aspects uh, it's it's there to provide for employees that may be going through uh, times of need or you know medical conditions or things of that nature um, and, and it's it's there for them in times of distress uh, but in addition on an annual basis it's now become tradition to provide checks to uh, nonprofits throughout the community uh, this year, a total of thirteen thousand five hundred dollars will go out, be dispersed to uh, nonprofits throughout the community. Fantastic! Uh, a few more uh, projects we got here: Project Five Thousand and Feeding the Community have to do with food and and helping those in need. Um, let, let's get to those, and then of course we have a big list from from Crystal and the police department as well. But let, let's get to Project Five Thousand. Well, Project 5000, uh, it's, it's basically a fan, uh, canned food drive that, uh, once again, it's just shown the generosity of the employees. Uh, this year, the goal, the goal was for each employee to provide 12, uh, 12 uh, non-perishable food items. And again, just it goes to show the willingness of some to go above and beyond where we had various members just say, I don't care about providing 12, I'm providing more. Mm -hmm. you know? and, and we had... Um, we had a, a good number of employees that provided almost 50 cans on their own. So, so the, the, those cans get the, distributed to the Thomas County Food Bank, and this year it's also being donated, a portion of it is also being donated to the Salvation Army um, Food Pantry as well. And also um, another uh, event that deals with food items for our community, Feeding the Community. That's a relatively new program um, that the city of Thomasville has started. I know there's still... Um, one more event left um, in the month of December, but those are held periodically throughout the year. So maybe give us kind of a rundown of what that feeding the community, what those events are all about. 
Well, you know, we, we've really kind of changed that from feeding the community as far as food, but what we like to call nowadays feeding community resources and, uh, and partnering with a variety of different uh, nonprofits throughout the community, we've been able to provide not only uh, meals, but provide them with resources, whether it's resources through the Salvation Army or the Community Outreach Training Center or other organizations out there that are, that are there for the community. And, uh, and sometimes it's just what the churches can do, you know, when providing someone with, 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 some, uh, with some prayer or, or anything else that and it just sometimes just conversation. There's people out there that just need conversation. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we've, we've, we've had such a great response from our community. Uh, we can't do it without our, without our community partners. That's the reality because it wouldn't be what it is. Uh, throughout these events uh, this year, we've not only provided, uh, like I said, resources, but we provided summer activity distribution for kids. Uh, right at the end of the school year, then we provided school supplies for kids at, uh, right before the school year started. Uh, in November, we provided toiletry items. And then as part of our upcoming December feeding event, we will be um, once again partnering with uh, Georgia Pines in Operation Gotcha Covered. We got you covered, uh, which will be distributing blankets, blankets for those in need as well. And what's the date for that December event? That, the date for that will be December 21st. Okay. Um, for the first time, we will actually be holding two different sites uh, during that event. We'll be working out of uh, Pineland Baptist Church, which is located at 2031 East Clay Street. But we'll also be working out of Salvation Army, out of their operations uh, uh, truck. And these events that we've touched on briefly today, um, a lot of these do take place during the holiday season. We do have other activities throughout the year that the city um, promotes and participates in. You know, our, our fire department has a free smoke detector program that offers free smoke detectors for city residents. We also have a project share program that's in conjunction with our Salvation Army where um, you can contribute um, money to your utility bill and then that is dispersed out through the Salvation Army to people um, in need in our community. So there are quite a few of, uh, programs and events that the city has and participates in, but we're gonna touch back possibly at the end and, and circle back to see if there's anything else um, Ricky or Crystal wants to touch on, but we're gonna move on into our wander with a first responder. Yep, say that, um, say that 10 times real fast. Wander with a first responder. <laughs> wander with a first responder. <laughs> Used to right. be known as shop with a cop. Yep. So that is something that the Thomasville Police Department is very involved in, and, and Crystal helps to spearhead that for our police department. So maybe you can tell us about the name change. I know I think this new name, Wander with the First Responder, came about maybe two years ago. Is yeah, that yeah, it's, it's fairly recent, yeah, um, but it was, it was very intentional um, because of some important changes that we made to the program. So, so give us a little overview about that program. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, first of all, just thanks again for having me back. It's it's always a, a pleasure to work with you guys and, um, you know, to come out and be able to talk about the, the things that we do at the police department and with the city. Um, it's just, uh, I enjoy doing that. So thank you. Uh, for giving me that opportunity. So, um, you know, I think a lot of people are familiar with Shop with a Cop. I mean, it's it's pretty clear what's going on there just in the name. Uh, it's catchy. It, it's all over the country. Um, two years ago, uh, you know, in speaking with, about like what Ricky was talking about, about the spirit of the employees here wanting to give back to the community, the fire department reached out to me um, about our Shop with a Cop program um, because Quite frankly, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> um, it's it's a really good time. The officers, you know, always enjoy getting paired up with a kid and, and being able to take them out for a special evening um, that they might not have otherwise. They get uh, to meet up with their first responder friend. They get to have dinner, and then we take them on a shopping spree. So um, essentially, the fire department reached out and wanted to find out how they could get involved in our program. And so in looking at that, it wasn't really just shop with a cop anymore because the kids were also getting paired with firefighters and EMTs. And so, um, you know, you're trying to find a, a catchy phrase, some kind of some kind of uh, way to redefine what the program was. And so um, someone suggested, oh, you know, maybe you could go wander with a first responder. And I was like, you know what? I like that. Okay. So that's where we went. Um, and, and we decided that, um, you know, from, from there on, it's, it's a collaborative um, labor of love between multiple different departments. So it's got the city fire department as well as Thomas County Fire um, working with us at the police department to put on this program for the kids. So 
it's it's uh it's it's gotten really special so and how do you um how are the children selected that are able to participate in this program yeah good question um we we get people that contact us every year wondering about that and and the way that we do it um, is we work really closely with our city schools and county the county schools also work with the um, town, the county fire department to identify the kids so we speak with the guidance counselors the principals and you know who better than the ones that spend five days a week with these kids? They kind of know a lot about their family background, where they're coming from, and they know the ones that are the most in need. Um, and so they help us to uh, pick a number of kids from each school, and um, that's that's where we go. Yeah, and I know you had this year's event on December the 7th, and about how many kids were able to participate this year? Yeah, this year um, we are sponsoring 45 kids total, so um, there will be officers from the police department there will be firefighters from both the city and the county fire departments um, each of us are putting up 15 officers to pair with 15 kids so um, it'll be be a good one of the fun things about group. going uh, I, I've kind of filmed been in those and filmed those you know obviously the kids are jazzed up you mm -hmm. know uh, oh, going yeah. shopping but uh, to see the police officers fired up, oh, I mean, yeah. they get into it too. It's oh, it, it's do. a it's like an overall just fun event to be around. It thank you. Yeah, we we really try to make it a, a fun evening for everybody. You know, funny hats are encouraged, and and uh, you know just Christmas cheer, bells, lights, whatever whatever you want to whatever you want to do. Um, you know, we just try to make it a really special evening that the kids will remember and and give them an opportunity to just kind of go and. You know, yeah, be a kid, to, right? Be a kid, you know, just go pick whatever you want, you know, from, from you know, with reason, of course. <laughs> um, but each, you know, each kid gets their own gift card, and so they can essentially go get whatever they want. Um, they can buy presents for their family if they choose. Some of them do that. Um, some want to buy snacks, you know. It, it just depends on, on the individual kid, you know. Some of them go in and just go crazy, and they're done in 10 minutes, you know. <laughs> and some of them are much more discerning about, about what they decide they want to get, so... Um, it's just an overall fun, fun evening. Um, it's, it's just really enjoyable for everybody. So it's, it's a, it's a program we all enjoy. Where, do, where does the, the funding come from? Is it donations to the police department? Do you guys go out and solicit sponsors? How, how is that whole program funded? Yeah. So, um, typically each year we, um, apply for a community grant through Walmart. Um, and so they, they've been a, um, a big part of this for for many years um, but we also rely on um, you know some of our fundraising efforts throughout the year and um, we also get some generous donations from the community and from from local um, organizations um, the city helps sponsor us most of the time as, as well as other organizations we do give back and I know a lot of it, we reflect a lot of people in our community there's a long history of, of people in this community giving back but uh, um, in the city, it is uh, a little different because we're so connected. I mean, the police department, um, you know, community outreach, you guys see a lot of things. Uh, you're involved in a lot of things, and you see where these needs are. But talk about that process, Ricky and, and, and Crystal. But, uh, Ricky, I'll let you go first. Well, you know, again, it, go, it goes back to, you know, the, the service-mindedness of the, of, the, um, of the organization and the staff that we have. You know, when, when I, I get the pleasure of putting together um, a lot of these programs, but I don't do them alone because I reach out to a multitude of people within the organization and reach out and lean on them, whether it's to help find people that want to get involved or to be involved themselves. And it's always a, yeah, what can we do? And the beauty of it is when the employees are there, they see the faces and the gratitude of the citizens that we're serving, and they walk away feeling fi uh, fulfilled uh, at that moment as well. So, Crystal, jump jump right in there and just talk about you know, uh, especially police, but just yeah. kind of the kind of the joining forces of community service and and, and police and city of Thomasville kind of goes together naturally in a lot of ways. Oh sure, yeah. You know, we started this um, this podcast episode talking about community and um, you know the spirit of togetherness and everything. And so, um, you know, I just have to continue on that same line, which is that, you know, none of us can do anything just by ourselves. And so it takes, it takes all of the organizations and the community 
members and the employees and everybody coming together to, to make these things happen and, and give back. And um, it just shows the, the generosity of, of everybody involved. So it's, it's not just um, the city organization. It's, it's, you know, the community's helping the community. It's what's happening. You know, we're all coming together. And I think that's part of what makes Thomasville special. Um, you know, I don't, I don't think all cities are like that, but I feel like we're all so connected and, and, you know, it's, it's a, just a phone call away, whatever you need, you know, you can find somebody that's, you know, ready to just step up and fill that. So, yeah, it's great that, that we are fortunate to work for the city of Thomasville and we do have opportunities of, to bring different ideas to the table and, and think of new projects or ways that we can get involved in the community. And, and we certainly appreciate both of you, um, Ricky and Crystal, for being on the podcast today and maybe just share some more information about um, about what the city of Thomasville does in our community and, and how our employees like to get out in our community and help. And we're always looking for opportunities um, to give back. So um, if any of you listeners have any ideas or that you would want to share with us, you can always get in touch with the city of Thomasville, um, 227-7001. Um, you can ask for Ricky or Crystal, and they will put you in the right direction to get in touch with them. But, again, we certainly appreciate all of you being on the show with us today. Yeah, yeah appreciate you guys. And, uh, again, y'all do a great job. Uh, Ricky, you had one last thing. It better be quick. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's just, uh, again, it's just, once again, a gratitude to, our, to all of our staff um, throughout our organization for jumping in there, whether it's in Hands on Thomas County or Zip It for the Needy or um, – visits to Scott Senior Center and, and uh, multiple things that we do. Um, again, you know, with, without our staff uh, being willing to jump out there, and sometimes it's during their lunch hours, not even, again, during, during a, you know, time, a time of work. Um, and then, obviously, a big gratitude to all, all of our, you know, members out there throughout the community that are involved. Uh, it truly cannot be done without them. Yeah. All right. Uh, we appreciate you, Crystal. And even you, Ricky, we appreciate you. (laughs) Thank you, listeners. We'll see you next time. You've been listening to Thomasville Insights with the City of Thomasville. The show is produced by the City of Thomasville Marketing Department. The show's music is by Pond5.com. To learn more about the City of Thomasville, visit thomasville.org or follow us on social media. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on your favorite listening app so you don't miss an episode. Thanks for listening.